morning, everybody. How are we all doing? Sam here, United People's TV. It is Friday. It's been another busy week. We're going to be saying that every single week, yeah, probably forever now. Well, certainly for the next few months anyway. The summer has started in earnest. Today, we will focus, well, there's plenty of us to speak through today. We're going to be speaking, today's supposed to be the deadline day. You know how many different deadlines we've had throughout this whole process. But when that fifth bid went in from... Sheikh Jassim, we were told that Friday was this deadline that he enforced onto the Glazers to try and force their hand, to try and stop them from just delaying and playing the games. We'll run through what's being said ahead of maybe a monumentous day, maybe uh, just another Friday. But it's anyway, it's, it's nice and sunny in, in, uh, in England, not sure where you are. But we'll run through that. We'll speak about transfers. We will speak about uh, Mason Mount. David Ornstein on Mason Mount, 70 million plus add-ons. <laughs> okay, okay, dokey. We'll speak about Mason Mount. We'll speak about uh, Kim Min Jai a new contract offer from Napoli. We'll speak about Amrabat. An interesting conversation around him and plenty more. And as I said, everyone down there, as soon as we hit 500 likes on YouTube, we'll do the second version of our interactive quiz. Going to try and do this every Friday. It seemed to work last Friday. Let's see if we can make it even better this Friday. But good morning to everybody who's down here in the comments. Chris, you're saying it's 39 degrees in Egypt. Jeez, that's putting us to shame. But I think it's going to be hotter than Ibiza and Tenerife in England this weekend. It's where, it's where you want to be. Probably not where, where everyone wants to be. Charlie, Carl, you're there as well. Natasha, Gangshi, as always. David, we've got John and, and uh, Josh, as always. Dave Curran, Stephen Reacts. Boz, we've got Miss Teacup, Declan and Yogi, who's on Facebook. Perry, good morning to you, my friend. We've got uh, Chris Ferrier. We've got Richard, John Murray, plenty of you. Loads of people joining in. What I will say to start the show is I've got to say something really, really important. Let me get this up to make sure I make sure I don't get it wrong because this is this is one of the most important things that we can say. Whoa, 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 whoa. I can't say anything. Jesus. Holy crap. What's going on here? Lou has gifted 10 memberships. What, Dean, it, this is wild. You just gifted 20. Gungshi's gifted 10. David's gifted 10. And Stu's gifted five. My word. My word. All of you. This is, I'm going to have to break the gong here. I need a bigger gong. Someone get me a bigger gong. But I'll tell you what I will do. I'll go back to the most important announcement of the day. <laughs> I've had that in my head for the last half an hour, and now you're going to have it in your head all day. Forza Inter, indeed. Tomorrow, Mkhitaryan, Lukaku, Damian. Look, lads, I've um, I've never doubted you once. I've never said one bad thing against you as players. I swear to God, if if Inter Milan can do it, if Inter Milan can do it tomorrow, come on, Inter did it against. When they had Mourinho at the new camp with Guardiola and they made him cry. Do it again tomorrow, please. Do it again tomorrow. Do it for everyone. It's what the football gods want. It's what everybody wants. It's what everybody would want. And Luke, you've joined in as well. Five, g five gifted memberships, man. Oh, I love this community. It's def it, definitely the thing that I'm probably most proud of in my life. The th something that I've built that's actually incredible. And you've made it what it is. I've enabled it, but you've created it. Everyone together, big up to the best community in the world. And as I said, big up to just make, just, I don't know, Darmin, just swing one in for Lukaku. Oh, Never doubted him. Never doubted him once. Forza Inter indeed. And if you haven't got that chant in your head, well, you have now, because <laughs> I've had it in my head for at least an hour already. But let's talk about the main headline of the show. And I, I, I want to go back there actually and say that that was in, this community is incredible. It really, really is the, the constant gifting of memberships to others to bring them in. It's the greatest compliment you can ever give the channel. It really, really is. We're going to need a bigger gong. 
10 points for the film reference if you get if you get that and you're saying can you imagine now tara martinez scores the winner then signs for us <laughs> i'd be fine with it i'd be fine with it martinez he's he well he's, he scored like 23 24 goals for into this year he scored a lot more goals than i thought he did but let's speak about the headline of today's show yeah there we go we've got a couple of you down there getting the jaws reference big up jaws wicked film anyway this is the main talking point on Wednesday, we got the, I wouldn't say it was completely surprised news that there was an extra bid that went in from the Qataris, from Sheikh Jassim. Kevin, you've joined the gang as well. Oh, there's a couple of you. Kevin, you've joined and KD Benzi. Let me know where you two lads are watching from. I'll try and give you a shout out. But let's go back to this talking point here. The... The fifth bid went in on Wednesday. Came it, it came from Mike Keegan, first of all. Now, as far as I know, I've been told that Mike Keegan is, in terms of where he's getting his news from, he's getting it direct from those involved in the Qatar, in the process, from the Qatari side of things, from a legal perspective, which I don't think is too much of a surprise, given that he's been hot on the news and first to the news, really, when it comes to anything from a Qatari point of view. Remember, Mike Keegan was the journalist who first broke the story that the Qataris were interested in a full takeover. Up until up until Mike Keegan released that article, any conversations around a Qatari involvement in Manchester United was just about minority investment. And you remember, do you remember the conversations we were having back in the day? QSI, QIA, percentage here, percentage there, PSG ownership, and we were it, it was just dead confusing, dead confusing. And it became far clearer when. Sheikh Jassim and the 9-2 Foundation was created and everything was going to be funneled through there. Now, throughout this whole process, they've they've talked a good talk, uh, the Qataris. Remember the statement that went out, going to bring Manchester United back to the top. Uh, they're pledging huge investment in the community and everything. Their statement was significantly better than uh, the Ineos statement. Clearly, they did well on a, on a PR perspective. Then throughout this whole process, it's gone, oh, the Qataris are favourites. Oh, Ineos are favourites. No, it's the Qataris. Are oh, actually, no, it's Ineos that are favourites. And in these last few weeks, it's all been about Ineos being favourites. And then this bid went in on Wednesday. Now, you remember that we had a conversation about, hmm, what's going to happen to the, the, the share price? Given what's happened to the share price, pretty much throughout this whole process, the, the share price, of, I mean, look, shares are volatile, right? When That's, that's kind of the nature of them. But, you can see here again, let's pull this up. That one there? Yeah, let's pull this up here. You can see the spike here, the vertical spike that happened on Wednesday when the news came out that, well, not the news, well, I suppose it is news. The news came out of the fifth bid from the Qataris. You can see that vertical spike there. You can see how Manchester United share price, and there, there are like four, five, six, seven different examples now that you can pull out from this whole process. Um, from when the news of the first Qatari bid went in and it there was a huge spike. Then when it was the Glazers were considering holding on to Manchester United and there was a big dip. It was a big spike. It, 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 the, the spike sort of corrected itself anyway over the course of the last 48 hours. But we were speaking about, hmm, what's going to happen there? That's Inter Milan. We were speaking about what's going to happen there and it happened again. Um, uh, Sunwa, you joined as a member as well. And Lee Willoughby. Legends. Man, this community is a one. I can't wait to do some sort of uh, live pod. I think that's what I want to do, a live podcast. I think that'll be a wicked thing to do uh, at some point in the future. Anyway. Uh, oh, my God, man. Hold on here, man. It's going, it's going, abs it's going, I just want to make sure I'm looking in the right place here. Because it is going crazy here today in the comments. Is that JVD, man? JVD, you hero. You gifted 10 memberships as well. Everybody, man. Too many heroes in this community. Too many. Too many men. Too many, many men. Anyway, don't know why I'm saying that. Bang a tune though. Anyway, let's talk about what's being said, right? Mike Keegan has said here, uh, hey, look, using the phrase in the coming days, it, it, it gives you everything, really. In the coming days could be in a day's time, in two days' time, in five days, in seven days' time. Or it could be in the next 48 hours, which is what we want it to be. I, 
I, I can't say with any confidence that I think this deadline is really going to be held to. But at the very least, it sort of changed the narrative. And the narrative needed to be changed, right? Whether or not... It, it, I'm not asking which sort of bid you're more in support of because we're not getting into that debate anymore. I, I don't want to have that debate anymore as a fan. I think I've exhausted that debate. And there are pros and cons to both sides. And that's the truth. But I'm just, I'm tired, Robbie. I'm tired. And it's, it's Manchester United summer now <sighs> is affected by this takeover. Our plans are affected. What Ten Hag can do is now affected. What Manchester United can do is now affected. I think behind the scenes, I think John Murta is probably doing as, as, as best as he can. Whether that's good enough, I suppose we'll, we'll find out. Um, Andy O'Boyle, no one really knows what he's doing, but I suppose he's helping John Murto. The people that are working at, behind the scenes at Manchester United are doing it, but it's in direct contrast to the lack of ambition that the owners still currently have because the owners of Manchester United are still the Glazers. And their main motivation is their own pocket. How much money can they make rather than how successful can Manchester United be? And until that changes, Manchester United truly will never change. Man, <laughs> you should see, I suppose you can see this, this live chat. There are gong shees everywhere. That's the best emoji we ever made. R man, Ricky and I'm a potato. Seriously, I need a bigger gong. I need to get one of those like massive ones you get in the background. I wouldn't have, any, I wouldn't have space for anything else in here. <laughs> Um, Sam, stop dreaming. Glazers will be here until they pass this snakes. Well, I don't really know what you mean there, but this is what David Ornstein uh, was saying on the takeover yesterday. He said it's emerged in recent weeks that the Ineos bid feels it is in a really strong position. They've gone into detail in negotiations and are opt. They have. They evidently have optimism that they will win in the end. And I think if you were to if you were to have your sources now, and people have got frustrated at how journalists have, have portrayed this the whole way through, right? Um, people are frustrated because you're hearing one thing and then you're hearing another thing. If you're if you're speaking to those close to the Ineos camp, they're going to be yeah, we're optimistic, we're confident. If you're going to speak to those close to the Qatari side, you know what they're going to say? We're confident, we're optimistic. You have to portray that from your side. Otherwise, it's defeatist. And you're not helping your own PR. You're not helping the momentum and the conversation around you in the public eye. Both of them will be saying that they're optimistic. Now, Ben Jacobs, who, of course, we've had hit on here. I I'm looking forward to, at some point, being able to buy a drink for Ben Jacobs. I think um, I'm really happy that I managed... Well, I, I chose to, sp to speak to him. I'm, I'm happy that he gave me his time. And he's given us hours here on United People's TV. So big up to, to Ben uh, for, for giving us that time because I think yeah, he's been somebody who's been involved in this process. He's been in the middle of the, the Qatari side, all three parties saying different things. This is what he said uh, latest on this. He goes, all signs point to the fact that the Glazers are actually getting both groups to get deep into this process. If they green light one of them, they'll be in a position to move fast as possible. I think that's why both groups have been in the dark for so long, which is kind of a bit of a... Um, kind of a in contradiction with each other getting both deeps to go deep both groups to go deep into the process and then keeping them both in the dark it's kind of hard to do both of those things at the same time which i kind of understand but it's they have just played a dirty dirty game which is and let's be totally honest it is so on brand so on brand for the Glazers. Lisa, you're asking down there, Sam, did you get an Inter shirt from Ben? No, I didn't get an Inter shirt, Ben. Can't believe you didn't think. Anyway, just for, Ben was like, I think Ben was saying that because Inter had no sponsor on the front of their shirts, I think for the Champions League final, they're temporarily going to be sponsored by Paramount Plus, who runs CBS Sports, who Ben works with. But he didn't get me an Inter shirt. I'll let him off. I'll let him off, though. Because... <laughs> <laughs> We're all Inter fans on Saturday. Oh, man, I'm, I'm not looking forward to watching that final. I really am not. But just, it might happen. It might happen.
But yeah, as I said, the, this whole situation, the way that it's played out is pure glazes. Like it is, it is so on, as I said, on brand. It, it ties into everything that they have done so far at this football club. And my honest opinion on this is that if there are two bids now that are quite similar, and that's I think that's what that fifth Qatari bid does, it does bring it up towards where the Ineos bid has always been. I think the Glazers are going to choose Ineos because from that perspective, they stand to make more money in the long run. And therefore, they will want to do that. That's just what I feel at this moment in time. But I don't know about this. I don't know about the structures of the deal. There might be more nuances to the um, Ratcliffe and Ineos takeover. And there might be more nuances to the Qatari takeover that we just don't know yet. And we won't know until the decision comes out. <sighs> Hopefully that will be this weekend. According to Mike Keegan, who, as I said, has been pretty, he's been kind of leading. He's been one of the leading journalists, certainly from the Qatari perspective, on this um, whole process. He's saying, look, a conclusion is coming. Maybe it'll be this weekend. Maybe it'll be next week. But if it happens soon, it has to happen soon. It's the 9th of June, man. The season ended last Saturday? Yeah, it was Saturday, wasn't it? FA Cup final. Yet here we are a week later still talking about it. Stop the games. If today is the true... if it, it, We'll find out if today was a, just like a... I don't know, like a power play from the Qataris without any real threat. An idle threat, if you want to call it that. Was this fifth bid deadline an idle threat or not? I suppose we'll know by this time tomorrow, won't we? Carl, you're saying, let me read a few of your comments out down here. Spence, you're saying, I swear Keegan said that before. I mean, they probably have. And, they, and he probably thought it was correct at that point in time. Honestly, I know that I know that we like to slate journalists. And look, plenty of journalists just make bollocks up. I absolutely agree with that. I don't know that. However, this whole process is, it's been, I'm not, I don't necessarily feel that I put a lot of the blame, I don't know, some some of the blame down the journalists, but there's no innocent party in all of this. In, in how it's played out and everybody being used as a sort of vehicle for PR. And that's why you've got to be really tight with your sources as a journalist. So you know and you can trust what they say. Because I think in this situation, a lot of people have been let down a lot of the times by just false promises, by false claims that haven't really come through. I think that's kind of how this is all played out. Look at that. We're on 370 likes. We've got only 130 more. And then we can get the interactive quiz on the go. And remember that we're going to be giving away. We won't be giving that one away. But I'm going to give away a, a Stan Chow poster. Might be a smaller one. Might be a bigger one. Might you find out when you win it. But as soon as we hit 500 likes, then we will get that interactive quiz on the go. Now, geez. Well, I've got to speak about this, right? Again, it's come from Mike Keegan yesterday. I won't really be... Uh, mods, if you can keep a, a... I don't know, keep a look on the comments here because uh, no doubt it all gets a bit crazy. I think you know... Well, I don't think you know. You know full well what my opinion is on this Mason Greenwood situation. Story coming out yesterday. And I think I called this on the podcast, a f I don't know, three, four weeks ago. It felt... The longer it went on, uh, the longer it went on, the more likely I thought it was that Manchester United were going to try and find a way somehow of reintegrating. And the easiest, this is an absolute cop-out of a decision, an absolute cop-out. You know what, lads? Let's just send him off to Italy or Spain or Turkey for a year. And, well, I don't know. Let's just see what he does there. And then maybe at the end of it, we can sell him for some money. Or maybe at the end of it, we can reintegrate him back into the squad. Sod that. The conversation shouldn't ever change around it. Sell him. Release him. Just make sure he never comes back, to, never plays for Manchester United again. It's just, for me, that's just, that's kicking the can down the road. That's what that, that's what sending Greenwood out on loan is, kicking the can down the road instead of taking the, de the definitive decision now and dealing with it. That's delaying the inevitable. And that's, that's the reason I don't like that. Um, I just think it's, uh, I think it's a bit of a cop-out. 
don't know. Maybe there's too many things going on at Manchester United. Man, that's an excuse. Anyway, I don't like it. We'll find out, I suppose, what happens. Look, he, maybe he doesn't get sent out on loan. I'm not saying that Mike Keegan's speaking the gospel, but it raises a, raises a conversation. Um, and I'm not getting into a debate in the comments here. All right. Uh, let's move on to the next talking point. And this isn't a case of me forcing my part here. Jeez. Man, we've had some... We've had some... We've had some heated debates, I think we call it, on here over the last year or so, I suppose. I suppose just as the community's grown. I remember the debates around Ronaldo, and they got crazy. I remember the debates around every single element of the takeover, and they've been crazy for months. Exhaustive, if I'm honest. I'm sure they are for you too. And now this, uh, these sorts of agreement situation is, uh, is another one. But let, I suppose let's find out. Let's move on to transfers, and there's plenty more to be speaking. Oh, no, never mind. We've hit 500 likes already. Jeez! Let's get this bad boy up. Right, let me see how you share it again. Uh, so this quiz. Right, waiting for players. This worked last time. Let's see if it works again this time. I'm going to drop the link to the quiz right there. I apologize if you're, you can also go, you can see it there. You can go to menti.com and use that code, type that code in and it will come up. I apologize to anybody who's watching the show just on your mobile because you won't, I don't think you'll be able to play because once you click it, it will take you away from the, um, or maybe you can, you can just do that without listening to me. I don't know. We'll see on that. But it was good fun last time. It seemed to work. Um, so let's try it again. Uh, there's five, qu there's f the, the quiz is very simple, right? There's five questions. Uh, the fastest finger first, you get more points for getting the answer in nice and quick. They're going to be one word answers. I think I've done one word answers. Maybe not. Was it one word answers? Is it correct answers? I think it's one word answers. Be as quick as you can because you get more points for being quick. All right. I think it was, is it Corey who won last time? Can't remember. Right. We ready? Let's get, let me just go. Let me go a little bit smaller actually on the screen so you get more of the quiz. Yeah, that's better. All right. You ready? Three, two, one. First question. Answer fast to get more points. Who did Veghor score his first Manchester United goal against? You've got 10 seconds to answer. If I had a countdown. Oh, too early. Too early. Boom. Of course, it was against Nottingham Forest. I would have accepted Forest or Nottingham Forest. All right. So I put those two answers in. Let's see how many people got that right. If I click now. I think it goes ahead to the leaderboard. Next slide. Leaderboard. We've got Kuled. Oh, you flew in there. Philip. Oh, looks like Philip's gone in strong. Philip with a little donut emoji. Very nice. Everyone likes donuts. Philip's currently there at the top of the leaderboard. He did score against Real Betis, but that was his second goal, not his first goal. Right. Let's go. Uh, anybody who wants the link to join in, let me... I'll stop for 30 seconds in between each question. For anybody who wants to join, you can see that we've got 140 players in now. And there's loads more. There's loads more on here. But um, I'll leave that there. We'll leave it for another 10 seconds or so. Remember, it's fastest finger first. All right. Three, two, one. Next question. All right. That's the leaderboard again. That doesn't really help me. Ah, no. That's the third question. Like Question two or five. There we go. I nearly balls it up. Right. You ready? Three, two, one. Question two. How many goals did Dimitar Berbatov score when he won the golden boot for Manchester United? Now, there's only one correct answer here. Do you remember how many goals it was? How many goals did he score? It was 20. It wasn't that many. And it actually was the same. Um, I think Carlos Tevez shared the golden boot that year as well. So 20 for, for Berbatov. He won that. Let's see who got this one right. Sat Singh, you flew in there. You got that one right. Linton, you were nearly right there. Philip, you've lost your, you've lost your position at Tonga. We've got Hungman. Not Hangman, we've got Hungman. Well, no, he's a happy boy. Stefan, you're up there as well. We've got two clear leaders so far, but it can always change. It can always change. We've got 200 players joining in now. This is good fun, man. I'm so glad that these, these quizzes work. Let me see if I can do that. Maybe you can see a little bit more on the screen. All right, you ready? Question number three. 
Natasha, you're saying yours didn't work. I'm Miss Guzzi. Miss Guzzi, there's nothing I can do. Right, you ready? Third question. How many goals did Wayne Rooney score for Manchester United? <laughs> that is a tough question. I know it is. But you can also type something else in if you want to get the answer. And you'll see in a second what I mean. He scored 253. I'll be amazed if anybody got that. But if you typed in loads or lots, I would have also given you the right answer. <laughs> All right. But 253 was how many he got. If anybody got that, I would be amazed. It's a tough question. Oh, look at that. Swizzy. That's a round of applause there. KP7, though, you're now top of the leaderboard. Abad Hungman, you've lost, you've lost it, mate. Oh, look, we've got the Shake. <laughs> Sheikh Jassim has taken out his time by Manchester United, and now he's fourth in the quiz. Ultimately, that's what he really wants, really. Right, next question. Question four out of five. Two left, all right? And we saved the most important question for the end. Fourth question. Who did Manchester United sign Park Ji Sung from? Get your answers in there. Get your answers in. Fastest finger first. Stu, you're saying my browser keeps wigging out. I haven't been able to answer a single question. That's your browser's fault. PSV. Yes, it was PSV. I also would have accepted Eindhoven if anybody really wanted to type in the long one. But it was from PSV. Let me see who got that one right. Oh, KP7. He's flying up this. Lou, Lou you've got it right. DT, you got that. No, hopefully not that, not that DT. Um, but KP7, you've currently got nearly a 300-point lead. It will be very Arsenal of you if you don't win the quiz from this point. But it all hangs on the last question. Right. The last question. All right. And it's the big one. It's a really tough one. Right. You ready for this one? <laughs> what did I have for breakfast? <laughs> Get your answers in the comments. There's three answers that I will accept here. There's three answers that I will accept. Let me see what you're going to type in. What do you think I have for breakfast? I had oats. And I would have accepted porridge. And I would have accepted cereal. All right? So they're the three answers that I would have accepted. Fish and chips, says Danny. Well, that would have been a serious breakfast. But the correct answer was oats. <laughs> you might get annoyed that that was a question. Let me see if anybody got it right. <laughs> Respawn, you flew in. Paul, KP7, no. You've lost it maybe on the last one. Oh, oh no, he's, he's still one. That's boring. That's not boring, but congratulations to you, KP7. I don't know who you are here in the comments, but you're going to have to reach out to me, all right, with proof that you're KP7, okay? I'll take a screenshot now on your phone. And then we'll get a poster, a Stan Chow poster sent out to you. Uh, who went second? Linton, you were second there. Reese Bourne, you were third. Hung man. Shake Jasim down there in sixth place. Not quite there. Uh, it wasn't overnight oats. It was just straight up oats. Boring as it is. It works. You don't get hungry. They're really, they're good, aren't they? I did that. That's two weeks in a row we've done an interactive quiz and it seems to work. I want to find a way to, I don't know. I don't think I'll be able to find a way so that you can do it without jumping off here if you are joining in on your, on your mobile. But it's a nice little interactive thing. Hey, look, let's speak about transfers again because the show's not finished. We are not even half an hour into the show yet, but we've done so much. Big up to everybody who's making this community what it is. It's dead fun. It's engaging. Let's talk about transfers, all right? And this this one here, <laughs> Vicky Plot Twist. Sam woke up in prison this morning. Luckily, I've never been behind bars. I'm a model citizen. I've never broken the law once. Anyway, I haven't. Mason Mount. Honestly, this, you, you can just, you just see, you, this whole Mason Mount situation is 70 million plus 10 million add ons. And honestly, I'm just there going, what is this guy on? What is this guy on? He's absolutely lost his marbles. I'm not sure he ever had marbles in the first place. But this summer, I feel, is a summer where Manchester United, and I'm not just, clearly Mason Mount, 
is one of Ten Hag's priority targets. Okay? You might disagree with it. Fine. But I think it's clear that he is. And I would apply the same logic to um, Harry Kane, to, I don't know, who else have we been linked with? Kim Min Jai's got a release clause, so it doesn't really count per se. But Manchester United have got to be willing to miss out on our top targets this summer and draw a line in the sand when it comes to overpaying for players. Because we have done that. We did it last summer with Anthony. You could argue with Casemiro at the time, but I think that worked out quite well. I don't think anybody now is saying that Casemiro is overpriced. It's just that we paid for what we got in Casemiro. Um, Martinez, you would say at the time we overpaid, but we overpaid on the right player and it's worked out and now he's worth every penny. But the Anthony one, we absolutely got shafted there. Probably double what we should have paid for Anthony at that moment in time. You might not like it this summer. And that's that, and, that, and that's the thing, because we you keep complaining about United overpaying and XYZ. There has to come a point where something gives. And it's either going to be United continuing to overpay, which we can't do. We've lost 200 million as a business in the last three years. We have to be better at spending and better at selling too. I think this summer is where Manchester United need to just draw a line in the sand and maybe and maybe accept missing out on one, maybe two of our top targets because we're not going to overpay. Otherwise, when does it stop? Now, quite a few of you are pointing down to the McAllister situation. It's, it's a poor comparison. McAllister had a release clause, 35 million. I bet you Brighton are fuming that that release clause existed, but that release clause did exist. The reason that we're getting asked for 70 million plus 10, that's so outrageous for Mason Mount. 40, 45 would be a fair reflection in the current market and experience and age X, Y, Z. I think you might, again, you might disagree with that, but I think 40 to 45, I'd be fine with that. I think that would be realistic. Apparently United, they're hoping they can find a compromise at 55. 55 is, 55 is a lot. But just, transfer fees everywhere are just absolutely full on mad these days. But 70 plus 10, <sighs> this guy is on one. And as I said, Abramovich and Chelsea screwed the whole transfer market. They they they, ch they changed the entire transfer market from the day they arrived at Chelsea to the day they left. Chelsea changed the market for everybody. Todd Bowley is doing the same now. Doing the exact same. He's come in and spent 700 mil since August and goes, oh, crap, that didn't work. Damn. Right, let's just charge everyone ridiculous amounts. I don't know how much Kovacic is going to go to City for. Probably not that much. I hate Chelsea. I've got no love for Chelsea whatsoever. An absolutely abysmal club who has just had rich, cash-rich owners that just come and just just dump it all in. Oh, yeah, just spend whatever you want now. Oh, yeah, go on and do that. Yeah, just sack a manager. Go on and bring a new manager in. Chelsea just had just Chelsea's had a business model that just has never made sense since 2003. Yeah, I hope they fold. Absolutely hope they fold. Anyway, good luck getting 70 plus 10. All right, good luck getting 70 plus 10. I agree with everyone down there. Manchester United, that's what I mean. Manchester United have to, at some point, draw the line. And that might mean walking away from Mason Mount and finding someone else that's far better than just overspending for every player because that's not work for united we have to be smarter we can't just get held to ransom just because it's because chelsea have screwed up and they need to sort of recoup their losses it's like they're like a, a heavy gambler who's now trying to charge everybody else more money to try and recoup their own losses that's what chelsea are doing there with mason mount moving on to another target um, is Kim Min Jai, Mike McGrath from the Telegraph. That rhymes. Saying that Napoli have offered him a new contract. I'm surprised. Is that the first time? Is that the first time that's happened? I don't know whether it is. I, don't, I think there might have been a, a contract offer that happened before. But anyway, this was always going to happen. This was inevitable. And the reason they're doing it is because they want to remove the um, release clause that exists in this contract. 
Absolutely. You know, you, you know, you know that Napoli wants to do this. They want to try and hold on to their team. It's what Napoli are doing this summer is what Dortmund did with Sancho. That summer that United went after Sancho and they asked for like 120 million, which was completely unreasonable, which was way over what he was worth. But they just didn't want to lose him that summer. So they put a ridiculous amount on him. It's exactly what they're doing with Victor Osserman. And no one's even talking about Kavada. Kavada? The Georgian. No one's even speaking about him because he would just go for phenomenal amounts of money. Whereas Kim is the one who could leave. And that's why they're trying to tie him to that contract. I did a video yesterday on my sort of what I feel is emerging as Ten Hag's ideal and perfect summer. And I think Kim is part of that. If it's not Kim, it is a ball-playing right-sided centre-back. And Kim clearly is towards the top of that list. And maybe uh, Axel Diaz is it Sassi from Monaco could be high at that list as well. But a ball-playing right-sided centre-back, he wants. That's part of his perfect summer. 75 million was too much for Sancho, says Declan. Well, it was absolutely fair at the time. Uh, the Sancho one's a... That's a proper confusion point for me. Really is. Like three months off in mid-season. Just the fluctuations. There's We've only ever had glimpses. Just little peeps at the Dortmund Sancho. And he's rarely been able to find that consistently. And to do that after having three months off mid-season, it's that bit. It's the, the same questions exist now at the end of the season that existed at the start of the season with Sancho. Same thing goes with David De Gea. Same concerns about his game. Probably exemplified. 10 times worse because we're starting to make progress elsewhere on the pitch. The deficiencies of De Gea's game stand out even more. But Kim, I think he's number one on our list. If United want him, I keep comparing it to the um, Nkunku situation. Chelsea paid slightly over his release clause to get the deal done early. United could technically do that if we really, really wanted to move to him. But money's a bit of an issue at the club right now. Um, an interesting sort of talking point, which I think we may have mentioned before, Amrabat. This is his brother speaking about, you know, what's going to be happening with him this time because he's very unlikely to stay at Fiorentina. He stayed at Fiorentina after the World Cup. They managed to sort of ignore the hype there and kept him for the last few months. And he said, look, I think in January United showed interest, but Ten Hag is now looking for a striker and he wants that first. From there, we'll see what's possible. But I know Ten Hag is charmed by my brother. He brought, I actually didn't realise this, that Amrabat was at Utrecht when Ten Hag broke through as a manager. So they kind of broke through into the senior part. Amrabat breaking through as a senior player, Ten Hag breaking through as a manager at Utrecht together. I didn't actually realise that, which is quite, quite a curious little stat or fact. But Amrabat is, at this moment in time, not the profile of a player that Manchester United are looking at. Now, if you take a look at his stats here, you can see where his strengths are and you can see where his weaknesses are. He is what you would call a specialist. And you can see down there, anybody who watched my... I did a video on sort of deeper lying playmakers and the list of plays that we could look at, different styles of ones. Ugarte was on that list. Amrabat wasn't, but Maxime Lopez was. And Maxime Lopez, if, if you take a look at his stats here, falls exactly in line with Amrabat, right? And look, they're, they're the two players that are completely compared to each other. He absolutely is a specialist in deep progression. Pass completion is in the 95th percentile of midfielders. Progressive pass is 92nd percentile. And passes attempted right up there in the 89th percentile. And the same thing goes for Maxime Lopez, who's a little bit better at ball carrying as well. But they are progressors from deep, which, is, which was a midfield profile signing I thought we were looking at. Really thought we were looking at. And that's where Amrabat, I could understand, that's where he would he would make sense as that deeper lying playmaker. But at this moment in time, it looks like we're moving towards Casemiro as the number six. And maybe Amrabat could come in and be a perfect alternative to Casemiro. I think that's a conversation to be had. But at this moment in time, we're not really making too many moves for that position. We're clearly going for a, a striker. I'm arguably two. We're looking for that number eight, which is currently Mason Mount. And we're looking for that right-sided centre-back. And that's Kim currently. and might be someone else. At this moment in time, we're not looking for an Amrabat-style player. And maybe we are this summer. But there's a few things that have to happen first. 
before we look at someone like him, maybe someone like Kaiseido. I don't know. Ashley, you're saying I'd be happy as he'd be cheaper than Kane. Well, he's not he's a very different player to Kane. Um, Amrabat would be, yeah, that sort of player who really could link up the defence to the to, to the midfield, bring the ball up the pitch. Of the De Jong mould. He's nowhere near he's nowhere near Frankie De Jong's level, but De Jong was supposed to be that player who took the ball from defence and brought it towards the attack. Amrabat does that. He links that. He's that progressive playmaker from deep. Um, JVD, you're saying, thank you very much for Super Chat and for the, the gifted memberships, man. You're saying Amrabat's brother told, was said in the same interview that he loves the football in Spain, so it won't be likely that he moves to the Premier League. I think he was saying that the Premier League or Spain, it's one of the two. I think I said it, it was yesterday, day before. Amrabat strikes me as a Barcelona signing. I don't know. Just, just in a, Obviously, their finances are all over the shop. But Bus gets his leave in. I think Amrabat could slot in there quite nicely alongside De Jong. And obviously, he'd love to move to Barcelona. Interested, I'm interested to see how that one develops. I don't, I don't personally think it's going to develop too much. But I'm curious to see whether United actually make a move for him. Um, and what else are you saying down here in the comments? If we're changing play and style to a 4-3-3, then he is not necessary. Mount is. Danny, I think that's, I think that's exactly why we're looking at Mason Mount and going so aggressively for him. It doesn't really make sense otherwise. If we were to stick with the formation we had last season, then going in so aggressively and quickly for Mason Mount wouldn't really have sort of it wouldn't really have wouldn't really have added up completely. Right? I mean, you you could say that Mount would have been an upgrade on Fred, and you'd be like, yeah, he is, but is that exactly where you need to improve that midfield? But no, if you switch it to having two number eights, you need someone in there to sit alongside Bruno. Ericsson wouldn't be able to play that role and Fred isn't good enough to do that across the course of a whole season. That's the upgrade that Ten Hag wants. I think he'd love to keep Fred there as that option inside the squad, but I don't think he ever looks at Fred. Might be wrong. I don't think he looks at Fred and goes, he's good enough to play every single, in the same way that Bruno Fernandes plays every week for Manchester United. That's why we're going so hard after Mason Mount. Uh, Carl, you're down the same. What's happening with the takeover? Well, the takeover, which we discussed earlier in the show, today is supposed to be this deadline day, right? And we've heard that. We've heard soft deadlines, hard deadlines, all sorts of deadlines throughout this whole process, and we're still waiting for it to go on. Today is this deadline that was put on the Glazers by Sheikh Jassim, not the other way around. And that's the difference in this deadline. We don't know whether it's just like a power play whether it's uh, an idle threat or whether there's actually going to be something happening from it. But I hope that maybe maybe we'll do an extra live stream tomorrow morning. That, that we, could, we, could, we could do that and speak about the news. Maybe, maybe that would be a good idea. I don't normally do a Saturday one. I think that could be good. I'll think about it. Niloy, thank you for the super chat, dude. Last night I saw some tweets that fans are going to boycott matches, protests, and will give up their season tickets. Well, it's too late now. People have given up their season tickets. I gave up my season ticket last season. Plenty of others did that's not going to make much of a difference because as much, even if the, and I, I says what I say to people, even if all 55, I think it's 55,000 season ticket holders at Old Trafford, somewhere between 50 and 55,000, if every single one of those in unison, which is impossible, but if every single one of those fans in unison gave up their season tickets, what would happen? Another 55,000 fans would buy them in a millisecond. And it wouldn't make an ounce of difference. And uh, that's why I've always found it very, very strained. It makes no sense why anybody argues and attacks season ticket holders. Like, like the season ticket holders of Manchester United are the problem of the club. You're mad. You're mad. I've, I've always found that one of the strangest arguments. As much as I do agree that a boycott of the stadium would have an, an incredible visual impact. It's also very, very difficult because Manchester United is one of the biggest clubs in the world. Very hard to organise. Anyway, today's Friday, which can only mean one thing. Tomorrow's Saturday. And another thing, it's Matt Day. So if you're watching, let me know what um, country you're watching from and what city in that country or town or village, anything. And I'll get you on the map. Um, Junior, you're saying there's 100, mate. 
There are so many people on that waiting list for the season tickets. It's the dumbest argument that any United fan can have. Oh, just boycott your season tickets. Like, <sighs> come on, people. You really? Well, well, talk about speaking without knowing the facts. But look, let's get three of you on the map. We've got one ton there. You can go straight on watching from Abuja. I'm going to go for Abuja. In Nigeria. Oh, no, that's how you spell it. Abuja. In Nigeria. There we go, sir. On the map. All the way from Nigeria. Let's see. What we Let's get two more on here. We've got... Ba -da -ba 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 -ba. We've got Peter watching from Anahilt in Northern Ireland. On you go, sir. Watching from Facebook as well. Welcome aboard. Anahilt. My mum's still over there. Where is it? Is that it there? Yeah, that's it. Well, you got a long. Well, you're not. You're not coming from a school. That'd be a bit weird. Uh. Well, you can come from a guest lodge. <laughs> Don't know why it's giving me such specific uh, addresses, but on you go. And Hill's on there. Let's see who else we got down here. Let's get one more. Uh, I wish you. I wish you could see how many comments flying at this point in time. Just like doing the interactive quiz. It's dead fun. We've got Floki watching from Alison in Norway. Look at that. On you go. Alison. Yes. And look at that. Let's have a look at the last five countries we've now got on the map. We've got Alison, Norway. We've got Anahilt in Northern Ireland. We've got Abuja in Nigeria. Balamina in Northern Ireland. Delta State. We've got Dabel in India. We've got Canada, Bhutan, Iran, Sweden. All around the world. It really is the best community in the world. And it's global. It is properly global. And look at that, man. The, the man himself that this bad boy is named after comes in strong with 10 gifted men. I don't know how many gifted memberships there's been, but you're heroes. Like, we did a giveaway there today. With a, We've got a Stan Chow poster. Uh, congrats. Forgot your name. Anyway, I'll go back and look at it. We've got this raffle that we're doing. It's only one quid per ticket. If you'd like to enter, I, mean, I always mention it once per show. Uh, and that's the soft mention of it there. If you'd like to buy a ticket, there you go. Fantastic. If not, no worries. And there's going to be more prizes. We've done the giveaways for the FA Cup final, the League Cup final, the FA Cup semi-final. Loads more too. Uh, last couple of minutes of the show. You can ask me whatever you want. Um, but it's been a busy week. It's been a busy week and it's going to be busy from here on in. If you're not a subscriber of the channel, I'd love to have you on board. Summers, I always find it weird. Whenever I speak to people about, you know, what I do and my job is, and like, oh, well, oh, football's finished now. Yeah, you can you can relax. I'm like, are you kidding me? It's, it's so much wilder in the summer than it is during the football season. Um, let me see what else you're saying in the comments down here. Alex, you're saying 80 gifted memberships. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. I love this community, man. I love this community. And, and I keep saying this. Uh, anything you, you give to me, I'm, I'm putting back into the channel. That's why the, the software, I'm so close to being finished on it. But there's a couple of things that just, they're little niggles that are just taking too damn long, unfortunately. But at some point this summer, I'll be, do, I'll be launching the software. I can't put a date on it. All right, I really can't put a date on it. Mihalis, you're saying, Sam, who's your number one target? Harry Kane. Quite easily. Harry Kane, I think, is a target who could have the most impact on Manchester United's season. I think I might do a, a short video on the... I've been thinking about it. It's a, the five... Um, the five... players who I think, if we sign them, would have the most impact on our season next season. Um, what are we saying down here? Dilly -dilly -dilly -dilly. Uh, Sam, do you think we'll get an announcement about a sale agreement rather than a preferred bidder? Carl, that is a dis that is a genuine possibility because we're that far down the process in terms of the bidders that what's going to happen when you go to a preferred bidder? I mean, all that kind of conversation kind of has already been done. So it might just be that somebody is chosen and that we move down towards the, the, the final stretch. But both of these are going to be complicated. One with the Qatari side of things, the fit and proper owners test will be more stringent. And on the INEOS side of things, because they will have to change the share structure, depending on how much INEOS offered to buy, neither of them are, are completely straightforward. John, you're saying, why are you not looking into Benjamin Sesko? 
because he's just joined RB, RB Leipzig. That's what I think. Aminat, you're saying, Sam, who do you, when do you think our first signing will be? That's a good question. We've made a lot of what I feel of good early moves. At this moment, they're all just moves. We haven't, we haven't reached a point where we've slapped a bid down on the table. And maybe it's that thing that there when we're actually talking about money. That is the hold up when it comes to new owners. That might be the case. I think our first signing, if we it's looking like Mount at this moment in time, Harry Kane, I imagine, is going to rumble on. I'd like to see us get Haaland regardless. And I'd like to see us shift players. That shouldn't be getting held up by new owners. Selling Maguire, selling McTominay, I think. Selling Martial, that doesn't require as much sign-off as spending money because that's money that's coming in. And that's something I think United should be able to do quicker. Ryden, you're saying Champions League prediction. Well, my Champions League prediction is I'm going to be an Inter. <laughs> In there, <laughs> man, I'm such an Inter fan tomorrow. Oh my word! Do you remember when? Um, I remember the day when Liverpool went to Crystal Palace and they had that. Was it a three-all draw? Chris Ball, they called it. I remember how incredibly fun that day was when that result happened. Uh, I'm just come on, Inter. Uh, I City of outstanding favourites. They are a relentless machine and United couldn't do anything. It was just sheer quality. Two, yeah, you could say them, two questionable goals. But Inter, please. It's what everybody, it's what all the, it's what the football gods need. Please do that. But look, I want to say what a wonderful Friday show that was and what a wonderful community from, from Gungshi to Dean to JVD to every single other Stu you down there as well, all gifting memberships. You're all legends. If you haven't, just please drop a like on the video for the last, just for the end of the show. Look at that, 730 likes. I think that's the most I've ever seen here um, whilst we've been live. Ah. I'll be here. I think I'm going to come here tomorrow morning and do an extra live show. It feels like, well, it depends, I suppose, what happens tonight. Eh? If nothing happens today and tomorrow, there's nothing else to be reported. I won't just do a show for the sake of it. You know full well that when there are talking points, I come here and we talk. Other than that, we'll be here once a day. So I might be here on Monday at 10 a.m. I might be here tomorrow at 10 a.m. Either way, have a wonderful weekend. I'll be doing some non-live videos as I always do. You're the best community in the world. Forza, Inter, Forza, Inter, Mkhitaryan. Just one into Lukaku. Isn't it? It's what we need.